From deep sea sci-fi to a Hitchcock classic, if you want to see any of these movies or TV shows, you best dig out the DVD player, because you won't find them online anytime soon. Despite being one of the most successful directors in the history of cinema, some of James Cameron's back catalogue remains unavailable online. Take for example the 1994 Arnold Schwarzenegger film True Lies, which cannot be rented, purchased, or streamed legally in the United States, although it is available on Disney Plus in the UK. Another such film is The Abyss, a 1989 sci-fi film about a group of scientists who attempt to recover a sunken nuclear submarine and its crew. As they explore the depths of the ocean, the team comes across a non-terrestrial intelligence surrounding the damaged craft. The Abyss wasn't exactly a huge success at the box office, grossing just over $50 million domestically. But it won plenty of plaudits from critics and has since become a minor cult classic. However, while it was previously streaming on Netflix, The Abyss has not been available to watch on the internet for an extended period of time. In fact, the movie hasn't even been released on Blu-ray, although Cameron himself has hinted that a 4K remastered release is on the way. Based on the Thomas M. Dish story of the same name, The Brave Little Toaster is a 1987 animated film from director Jerry Rees. It follows an anthropomorphic toaster who comes to life when humans aren't around, kind of like a more breakfasty version of the toys from Toy Story. Along with a wide array of other electrical appliances, the toaster sets out to try and find its owner after they fail to return to the holiday home for several years. Things could be worse, you know. How? How what? How could they be worse? They couldn't. I lied. Despite limited success at the box office, the brave little toaster was able to find some popularity on home video and received largely positive reviews from critics. The film was broadcast on the Disney Channel and enjoyed a small theatrical release, and was later followed by two sequels, The Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue and The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, both of which are available to stream online through Disney+. However, the original film is absent from any streaming service and cannot be purchased or rented online. Although many modern TV fans might not know it, Murphy Brown was one of the most popular sitcoms on television to the 1980s and 1990s. It aired for nearly a decade and broadcast a total of 260 episodes across that time. Candice Bergen portrayed Murphy Brown, a recovering alcoholic who works as an investigative journalist. As if you need proof that Murphy Brown was a bona fide pop culture phenomenon, take a look at the countless awards it won, including numerous primetime Emmys. So why is Murphy Brown destined to remain solely in the world of physical media? Well, it's complicated. For one thing, the show was produced by Warner Brothers despite airing on CBS, so it's not actually clear where it could stream. It also utilized a large amount of music, meaning the songs would all need to be licensed all over again, and the sheer number of Motown hits featured in the series makes it cost prohibitive. Unfortunately, you won't have much luck finding this show on modern home media either, as only the first season was ever released on DVD. Moonlighting was a comedy drama series that starred Bruce Willis as a private detective and Sybil Shepard as his business partner. Airing on ABC between 1985 and 1989, the series crossed genres, frequently broke the fourth wall, and included a number of fantasy elements. The show was also responsible for bringing Willis to the public's attention and had a hit theme song from jazz star Al Jarreau. Moonlighting garnered a positive reception and won a number of high-profile awards, including several primetime Emmys. However, it has failed to appear online in any form, but some outlets suggesting that this may be due to music rights issues. The series contains a large number of songs in every episode, and licensing all of that music might not be worth the cost of adding it to Hulu or Disney+. Plus. Kids today, it's always gimme, gimme, gimme. Let It Be is a 1970 documentary film that charts the creation of the Beatles' final studio album. The film features no narration or interviews, instead showing the musicians as they prepare for the upcoming record by rehearsing songs and discussing the recording process. Although there are no obvious fights depicted in the documentary, the tension between each of the band's members is palpable. Let It Be provides a fascinating glimpse into the internal conflicts that would cause them to split up a month before the movie's release. The film culminates in a full recording of the band's iconic final rooftop concert. While Let It Be has been given a few limited home media releases in the past, it has not been reissued or made available via streaming. Speaking to Rolling Stone, Paul McCartney refuted rumors that he had blocked its release, but even today, fans still cannot access the original documentary. However, much of the footage from the film was later used in Peter Jackson's documentary series The Beatles Get Back, which is available on Disney+. 
Kevin Smith's view of skew universe movies might not be to everyone's taste, but films like Clerks and Chasing Amy have accrued dedicated fan followings and widespread praise from critics. The 1999 film Dogma is in the same mold, although it hasn't enjoyed the same attention as some of Smith's older releases. Featuring an ensemble cast driven by a whole heap of star power, the story follows a group of religious figures attempting to prevent two fallen angels from defying God's will by returning to heaven, an act that would have disastrous consequences for reality. The main issue blocking Dogma from streaming online appears to stem from a disagreement between Smith and Harvey Weinstein. The director told Cinema Blend that Weinstein owns the rights to the film, and that the disgraced producer is blocking a sale that would give Smith control over its release. The Fall is a 2006 movie by Indian director Tarsim Singh. Based on the Bulgarian film Yo Ho Ho, the story follows a stuntman who befriends a young girl in the hospital while recovering from a number of severe injuries. To help stave off boredom, he tells his companion fantastical stories that come to life in the girl's imagination. Starring Lee Pace as a stuntman Roy Walker, the film received mixed reviews and didn't fare particularly well at the box office, although Roger Ebert gave it 4 out of 4 stars and recommended it as a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Producer Without any major studio involvement, The Fall has failed to materialize on any streaming platforms and isn't available to rent or buy, meaning the only way to see it is by tracking down one of the limited DVD or Blu-ray releases. Before he found widespread fame in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Andre Brower was one of the stars of another police-based television series, Homicide Life on the Street. Do you know what gravitas sounds like? Greetings. Based on the David Simon book that would also inspire The Wire, this NBC series ran from 1993 until 1999, spanning seven seasons, 122 episodes, and a TV movie. This show is highly regarded by many. In 2007, Time even counted it among the best television shows ever made. Life on the Street was also nominated for dozens of awards, including a number of Primetime Emmy Awards. Several different DVD releases have been released over the years, but there is currently no way to legally access it online. This may well be another music rights issue, as the show features a lot of contemporary music, although the involvement of a number of different production companies probably didn't help either. Directed by Scott Hicks, the 1996 movie Shine is largely based on the real-life events surrounding pianist David Helfgott. From a young age, the future musician is forced to learn to play at the insistence of his abusive father, but the pressure of performing eventually leads him into a mental health crisis. Jeffrey Rush brought the tortured pianist to life in Shine and won considerable acclaim for his performance, while the film in general was almost universally praised by critics and audiences. Sadly, Shine is not available for streaming in any location. The movie was released on DVD shortly after its theatrical debut, while a Blu-ray version came out in 2010. So while it's not easy to find and watch, it's not impossible either. Green Street Hooligans is a 2005 crime film that stars Charlie Hunnam and Leo Gregory as British football hooligans who are joined by an American in visiting his family. The film charts how the Green Street elite fights over rival groups and travels to football matches across the country. However, events quickly take a tragic turn as Elijah Wood's character Matt is exposed to the gruesome consequences of hooligan culture. Those living outside of the US might have more luck being able to watch Green Street Hooligans. It's available to buy and rent on a variety of services in the UK, for example, including Microsoft, YouTube, Amazon, and Apple. This may well be because Green Street Hooligans, known simply as Green Street in the UK, simply lacks international appeal, as the subject matter is very specific to that country. As such, it has not been picked up by any overseas streaming services or digital distributors. Based on the comic series of the same name, Tales from the Crypt was an HBO anthology series that ran for seven seasons between 1989 and 1996. It mixed elements of horror, comedy, and dark fantasy to deliver stories that often included graphic violence and mature themes. The series was hosted by a mysterious figure known as the Crypt Keeper, who would introduce storylines and talk directly to the viewer. Over the years, a number of guest stars featured in Tales from the Crypt, and the series also received a number of spin-offs. What's the matter with you? You want to keep that 90 pound corpse for the rest of your death? Keep pumping! The show's absence from modern streaming services, including HBO Max, appears to be due to complicated rights issues. TNT executive Kevin Riley even told Deadline that Tales from the Crypt suffers from the most complicated rights structure he has ever seen in his career. The fact that the comic book series has been sold multiple times to different owners has undoubtedly made it even harder to reboot or re release the franchise in recent times. 
Created by John Beckerman and Rob Burnett with the help of David Letterman, Ed is a comedy drama series that first hit television screens in 2000. The show follows Tom Cavanagh's character Ed Stevens, a down-on-his-luck lawyer who loses his job after making an expensive mistake. To make matters worse, he discovers that his wife is having an affair. Ed immediately decides to go back to his hometown, where he chases the affections of a local woman and reunites with his best friend. Having a run for four seasons and received generally positive reviews, you'd probably expect Ed to be available on a variety of platforms, but it isn't. Even the show's creators are unsure why it hasn't been added to any digital service, with Burnett suggesting that it might be due to a combination of music rights and the fact that NBC, Universal, and Paramount co-own the series. The 1940 Alfred Hitchcock movie Rebecca is a film adaptation of Daphne du Maurier's 1938 novel of the same name. Rebecca stars Laurence Olivier as a widower who falls in love with a young woman, played by Joan Fontaine. Like many of Hitchcock's other films, though, this is not so much a simple romance as it is a psychological thriller, one that revolves around a dark secret in the widower's past. The movie was a huge success when it was released and won two Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Even with its award success and acclaim, Rebecca cannot be watched in any digital format. It occasionally airs on Turner Classic Movies, and the Criterion Collection has released a film on both DVD and Blu-ray. The fact that it is not available digitally has never been explained, and it's all doubly confusing considering that many other celebrated Alfred Hitchcock films are readily accessible online.